Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first virtual open event. Uh, in this session, we're going to be talking about the various construction courses we have on offer here at Hertfordshire and Ludlow College. Uh, we've got a video to start with that will just go through the courses in a little bit of detail. And then following on from that, we've got the tutors available to answer any questions, queries you may have, um, and they can help you out from there. Hello. My name is John Gill and I'm here to tell you about the range of courses we offer within the Faculty of Technology Studies and a little bit about what study as a full-time student for the college looks like. Here in the Faculty of Technology we offer a wide range of courses at various levels, all designed to give you the knowledge, skills and qualifications that you need to get you to where you want to be, whether that's further study, higher education or into employment or an apprenticeship. In our Construction and Building Services Department, we offer courses in the various construction trades, including electrical installation, plumbing and gas, brickwork, carpentry and joinery, and furniture design and make. The emphasis is on developing practical skills and knowledge and applying those skills in our specialist and dedicated practical workshops. Your teachers are all experienced industry practitioners, and our construction students typically move into relevant employment or an apprenticeship once they have successfully completed their time at college. In our engineering department, we offer a wide range of disciplines, including manufacturing and mechanical engineering, motor vehicle maintenance and repair, computing, IT and games development, and music technology and production. Again, all our staff are experienced and qualified industry practitioners, and you will be taught in specialist classrooms, computing labs, workshops and studios to enable you to put what you have learnt into practice. In our Foundation Studies department, we offer a broad range of courses for those students who need to work at a lower level and perhaps need some additional support before they are ready to progress to the next level. These introductory courses cover areas such as catering, construction, IT, childcare and general employability and life skills, with an emphasis on developing your literacy, numeracy and social skills along the way. So whatever your interest, whatever your level of ability, we have the right course to offer you to set you on your way to a successful career in your chosen area. And in the majority of all these areas within the faculty, we can also offer apprenticeships as an alternative route to full-time studies with a dedicated apprenticeship delivery team and contact with hundreds of employers looking to offer job opportunities with training to young people. As a full-time student, you will typically spend three full days at college each week and your programme of study will be made up of your main qualification in the subject you've chosen, as well as continuing study in maths and English for those students who have not yet achieved at least a grade four at GCSE in those subjects. You will be allocated a personal tutor who will provide support, advice and guidance when you need it, and agree and set your targets to enable you to keep on track and fulfil your potential, as well as advise you on the next steps after you have successfully completed your course. As well as attending college, you will have the opportunity to attend various trips and visits relevant to your subject area, meeting with employers and getting a better understanding of working practices and technologies. And of course, college is very different from school, and we encourage you to make best use of the wider college facilities, to make new friends and to have some fun on the way. So we look forward to seeing you, and whether you have already applied for a course or are still thinking about it, please take this opportunity to find out more by checking out our website and our subject and course level podcasts and webinars. Don't delay, sign up today. Hi there, I'm Phil Kitchener and I want to thank you for considering training and a possible career in construction and building services. Construction has a wide range of highly paid job opportunities and training is the best route into employment. I work with a team of over 30 specialist members of staff who have all come from industry and in our modern purpose-built workshops can offer you the training and qualifications that will put you on the path to employment and success. Many of our current employers that work closely with the college are past students and often take on apprentices from our full-time courses. Most areas offer good progression options with a starting point at either level one or level two, then advancing to level three and even gaining entry into university. Lots of our qualifications offer transferable skills, so the opportunity exists for some learners to switch between areas when returning following year. With over 700 roles in construction, I can see why the sector can seem confusing. So for clarity, I'll break them down into the areas uh, and discuss them in turn. Electrical, brickwork, carpentry and joinery, furniture making, 
plumbing and gas. I urge you to look at all that we have to offer and hopefully speak with some of the tutors to get the best advice prior to making an application. Electrical installations. Have you ever imagined being your own boss? Well, a lot of local electricians started out here in the college. With either a level one or two as an entry point, you can then progress onto a full-time level three or into an apprenticeship. Nearly 50% of the training is hands-on in one of our three dedicated workshops, teaching the correct use of hand and power tools, different wiring systems, the regulations, and also the ability to inspect and test an installation to make sure it's safe. With a good career prospects in domestic house wiring, commercial, that would be shops, offices, uh, and industrial, which would be breakdowns, manufacturing, and agriculture, which would be supporting the local farming community. There are other complementary sectors, such as refrigeration, CCTV, engineering, heating and ventilation, data, and that's just a name but a few. Brickwork. Ever thought of building your own house? or gaining the essential skills with enthusiastic trainers would be a great start. A physically demanding job that leads to high earning potential for the right person. The training consists of compliance with on-site health and safety, reading of site plans, setting out, brickwork, block work, building internal and external structures are some of the key components taught on a bricklaying course. Maintenance. Want a wide range of skills used in the construction industry? The Level 2 Maintenance course offers an opportunity for learners to gain skills in areas such as brickwork, painting and decorating, plastering, plumbing and carpentry. With some employers now wanting a multi-skilled workforce who are able to perform different tasks making them more efficient and profitable, this qualification could be the one for you or it may become a stepping stone for another specific trade area. Carpentry and joinery. That vision of building a house could be a timber framed one. Level one and two offers learners the opportunity to work with hand and power tools, learning jointing techniques, interpreting site drawings, able to conduct both first and second fix, making them work ready for employment on building sites. The joinery element might be better suited to a learner more comfortable in a workshop setting. Furniture level two and level three. Got an eye for detail? Imagine the bespoke set of drawers, restored piece of heritage furniture, high spec kitchen, or a million pound boat. All of these industries look for workers with this type of training and skills. You'll be learning a highly specialized trade that also gives you an opportunity to showcase your creative side. As you're often asked to design your own work prior to creating a one-off masterpiece. Plumbing. Like the idea of a job that offers variety, cold water, sewer systems, hot water and heating systems, rainwater collection, cooking equipment and gas installations. You will work with a wide range of tools and materials such as copper, steel and plastic. The level one qualification offers a taster of other disciplines such as electrical, heating and refrigeration. The level one qualifications offer progression to employment and apprenticeships and options for domestic and commercial plumbing, heating and ventilation, environmental technologies and gas certification. I hope this has given you an insight to what we have to offer here in construction and building services. Please try to speak directly with the different specialist staff in each area as they're keen to answer your questions and I look forward to seeing you at college in September. Okay, so hopefully that's given you an idea of the different construction courses available uh, here at the college. Uh, we, as I say, we've got the tutors available here to discuss various different questions that you may have about the course. Um, I've got a couple of questions already lined up for uh, the construction team. Um, so if we go across to Colin, um, just a couple of questions um, in regards to sort of what grades are required and that sort of a thing, please. Uh, no official grades required, Dave, uh, for our qualifications, but obviously English and maths at the higher grades of four above is an advantage. Um, it just means they don't have to resit their GCSEs. Okay, brilliant. 
And in terms of uh, the timetable, what's sort of the balance between sort of theory and, and practical? I would say you'd spend about 70% of your time in the practical setting, um, with obviously a little bit of attendant theory from us and English and maths if required. OK, brilliant. Um, and in terms of the English and maths, um, how does that sort of slot in with, with the construction courses? Well, English and maths, um, grade four and above um, means that it automatically transfers into apprenticeships. <coughs> Excuse me, so you don't need to worry about that if you move on into employment. Um, obviously, in the full time first year or year one, then you'd be looking to um, take your GCSEs again if you get a grade three or under um, or functional skills all leading again back to employment and back to apprenticeships. OK, brilliant. Um, speaking of the apprenticeships in construction, uh, Brian, if I bring you into the fray. In in oh, I think you just muted, Brian, uh, in, in terms of the um, construction apprenticeships, what sort of availability is there? Um, it, it's an unknown area at the moment. There are a few companies still looking and asking me for apprentices going into level two. However, level one is often better for a school a school leaver to do that first. Um, yep. But I've got a few employers uh, still asking, so it's not all dark skies. <laughs> it's good to hear. Um, and in terms of the apprenticeship, um, what, what's sort of the, the, the setup for the apprentice, apprentice? Apprentice? Do they have sort of, is it one day a week in college or? Well, ideally, if um, with carpentry or joinery, it's one day a week in college, the rest of the time on site. Uh, with brickwork apprenticeships, it's generally two days a week in college and the rest on site. And that's usually now over a two year period, so about 24 months for the apprenticeship route. OK, brilliant. Uh, so before I move on to uh, brickwork as a subject as a whole, Chris, if I can bring you in next. Similar sort of questions as as was for Colin, really. Um, what sort of grades do you need for for brickwork? It, it's again the same as Colin as well. It's it's um, there's no particular grades that you have to have from school. Uh, and it used to be an initial assessment when they came in to do an interview. Um, but that will be done at the beginning of the course now due to the situation we're in. Um, and that would just give us an idea of their math and English sort of levels and which courses to put them in regarding that. They so, you know, if you've got your grade fours and above, then that's that's ideal. That gets you into a directed study as well on the full time programme, which um, which means that they wouldn't do maths and English as, as a subject, but they would still do maths and English related um, content relevant to the course itself. Yeah, OK. Um, and what, what's the timetable set up? So how much time do you get in the workshop as opposed to theory? Uh, it's possibly a little bit more practical, but you know, not much more than that. This still has to have uh, at least three to four hours of theory a week, uh, and then the math and English as well. That's that's part of that, and then the rest of it is practical um, workshop based. And obviously, being a practical subject, they have to make sure that uh, you know that they're good at the practical elements of the course as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, in terms of the theory side of it, what sort of subjects do you tend to cover? Is it sort of um, like structural integrity, that sort of thing, or? Yeah, we start off with, with health and safety. Obviously, we need to make sure that every student is safe on a building site. So that's the main subject we start with at the beginning of the year. Moves on to a, a unit called principles of construction, which which um, covers all of that. You know what you're talking about there, foundations, floor structures, wall structures, roof structures and so on. Uh, and then we then uh, focus on the, the units uh, you know, based around the brickwork, so cavity walling, solid walling, setting out buildings as well. OK, brilliant. Um, Martin, if I could bring you in to discuss some bits and pieces about electrical now, if that's OK. Um, so again, similar sort of questions. Initial grades to, to start the course. Oh, you, you just muted there, Martin, sorry. 
for our level two course, we generally like to have um, coming out of school, anybody with a grade four or better. Uh, this is mainly due to the, the science and principles content that's on the course it's, it, and uh, the maths that's involved uh, on that course. Um, you know, if you if you haven't got it or you've got three, then we would take you in at the level one sort of um, stage to sort of help gain you those uh, additional skills to, to make the level two uh, a little bit more comfortable uh, moving forward. Really. So you know, we're, we're a bit stricter on on the uh, entry grades, uh, maths and English at uh, grade four or better, hopefully for the, the level twos and um, with a science to, to demonstrate a, an understanding of the science concepts that we'll be discussing in the, in the course. OK, that makes sense. And, and in t again, in terms of the, the timetable of the course, what's sort of the, the balance between practical and theory? Um, well, at level one, the, the practical is more 60%. Um, with the, the remaining sort of spread across a, a, a health and safety, science and principles, uh, starting work in construction, something to sort of get you uh, sort of motivated and learning. At level two, we, uh, we generally have it at 50% practical, with 25% uh, at the time uh, discussing science and principles, and the other 25% is spread across technology, health and safety, and a tutorial programme. OK, brilliant. Um, and in, in terms of sort of English and maths, if students haven't quite got the grades for that, how does that sort of slot in with the course? Uh, how it slot, slot into the course? At level one, we would um, you, you would have to take, retake the appropriate GCSE, um, whether that be maths or English. There are there is a two hour session during the course of a day, um, one for maths and one for English during the course of the week. Uh, at level two, if you haven't gained the GCSE, but you're a known student, i.e. you've done the level one and progressed, then uh, again, there's another two hour session uh, during the course of the, the working week. Um, ideally, you would have gained your GCSE uh, before entering the level two and you'll be working in the uh, directed study area, uh, completing work set by the tutors around maths and English, but also around the electrical technology sector. OK, brilliant. And students sort of when they finish studying, what do they typically tend to go on to do? Is it sort of set up their own business or? Well, at, at level two, you, you can't be qualified as an electrician. You have to go on into doing the apprenticeship route, um, which is a, a almost a four year course uh, or a four year apprenticeship. Um, you're at college for one day a week doing theory and technology side, backing up what you've learned at level two. And then you've got to produce uh, what is known as a portfolio, so evidence that you're working to a, a, the correct and appropriate industry standard. Many electricians that uh, complete our course have gone on to work in the film industry, start their own businesses and then you know, take on apprentices uh, with us or they go off and do um, something different, work across the seas. We've got one electrician that's worked in New Zealand. We've got um, many that have gone over into Canada to work as well. Wow, that's, that sounds brilliant. OK, thank you very much. Uh, Tim, if I bring you in next just to talk about plumbing, if that's OK. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Uh, so again, similar sort of questions um, in terms of the, sort of the grades for starting. Yeah, well, it's to, uh, to get onto level one, we don't expect any particular minimum grade. You would need to do a BSKB entry exam, which will give us an idea where you are with your um, sort of um, literature and maths. Um, but, uh, you know, um, we would like to see fours and above ideally, which would mean that you wouldn't need to continue your GCSE studies in college. Um, with your level two, we'd like to see you really do a level one first, especially if you're a school leaver to get onto level two. But again, there's no minimum requirements for a level two. OK, brilliant. Uh, and again, in terms of that sort of the balance between practical and theory, yeah, the, for the level one is very similar to the other construction trades. It's about 70% practical and 30% theory. Um, it's three days a week full time. And depending on whether you've done your, your GCSEs and done well, you would have to do director studies if you weren't doing your GCSEs. The level two is probably 60% practical and the remaining time for your theory work. OK, brilliant. Um, and in terms of sort of career prospects afterwards, what do people tend to, to go on to do? Maybe a well, simple question, but. 
Yeah, well, once you complete your level one, you move on to a level two because once you've done your level one, you feel confident that you enjoy the subject. With your level two, which is really good because it gives you, you the um, the option to be able to contact an employer and say, I've done so long in college, I've got this qualification, and it gives you the opportunity to find yourself an apprenticeship, really. So, yeah, they move on to apprenticeship or, or, or find some time working on the construction industry. Okay, brilliant. Okay. Um, just, we'll just keep a, an eye out if there's any other further questions to come through. Uh, doesn't look like we've got any of us at the moment. Um, anyone got anything they'd like to add about their course at all? I need to unmute Brian. David. Yes. Just for an apprentice, if they've not got their GCSEs, we'll have to do functional skills at the appropriate level. And that's delivered outside of their normal college day, so it's delivered in blocks. Uh, OK, that's worth knowing. Yeah. Is there, is there anything else to add with apprenticeships in, in general or? Um, not a general, no. I mean, all the courses can go on to an apprenticeship. It's, there's just different routes, which is quite complicated to explain over here. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. <laughs> but you can contact individual assessors if required. Yeah. Who will have contact with employers, etc. That's fine, that makes sense. OK, then. Well, if anyone watching um, either live or on the recording of this has any further questions um, by all means you can contact us through the website you can contact us through uh, the facebook page and we can relay your messages to uh, the relevant tutors for the relevant subject areas uh, and they can get back to you with the information that you require um, if you've got any general questions about admissions or learning support we have got sessions later on today uh, in, this, in the afternoon to discuss those two areas um, but for now we'll uh, end this session here. Thank you very much. Thanks.